Hello, welcome to the Creative Obsession Podcast. My name's Carrie, and I come to you from the state of Oregon, just outside of Portland. Uh, today is November 30th, 2017, and welcome to my little channel. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I last recorded because we had Thanksgiving and you know that kind of stuff going on so uh, welcome back if you are returning and welcome if you're new I appreciate everybody being here and watching and subscribing and the beautiful comments that I get from people so I really appreciate all of that uh, it's been I want to say kind of a busy last few weeks just because we had Thanksgiving uh, in the States and so we had most of my family here for Thanksgiving dinner and you know just busy doing stuff um, I was busy making some Christmas gifts for my friends and I didn't take any pictures of them and I've already gifted them to them <laughs> so I don't have anything to show you of of the things I've been making over the last few weeks uh, one of the new things is I did get a new camera um, I took advantage of the Cyber Monday and picked up a new video camera and in the hopes that I can, a uh, few things that I was wanting to alleviate. My, uh, my SLR camera had an autofocus and it would focus on something, but when I recorded video, it wouldn't do a continuous focus. It was fixed on wherever I focused it. So I couldn't show things close up uh, without it getting blurry. I had to pretty much just be right where I was. It's gonna focus there. It's only gonna focus there. Um, another issue was that it would only record for 12 minutes at a time. So every 12 minutes, I'd have to watch the time, stop it, pause it, whatever, stop in the middle of what I was saying because it shut off, um, whatever it was. So I'm with this camera, it should continually just um, just record and I can keep it plugged in so I don't have to worry about the battery running dead and it should focus when I show things up close. I'm afraid that some of the quality is not going to be the same because I um, my other camera obviously would have better video or you know lens quality so hopefully this is still okay I'm kind of monkeying around with lighting and and making some adjustments in the camera. Um, so fingers crossed, because if this doesn't work and I get done recording all this, which I've tried little snippets and I, th I think I've got it okay. Um, but if this doesn't work, then I have to <laughs> re-record, which is never fun because I've had to do that a few times, especially in the beginning when I first started doing the podcast. And if you have to re-record, it's really hard because then you're wanting to explain something and you think, did I explain this already? I think I already said it, but then you're like, did I say it in the previous recording or whatever? So hopefully, fingers crossed, this works. It's This may be the only episode that this camera gets used, but we're going to go with it. So um, so that's why you might see some things that are different. As you can see on my long arm, I'm working on a couple of Christmas uh, wall hangings. Uh, these are for the Mama Made It Quilt Shop, which I've explained before that I do long arm quilting for. Uh, the one that's currently on the machine and being worked is a, is a really cute like stocking, kind of an old fashioned stocking wall hanging. And then the next one I have is a little gingerbread one. So. Um, I, they're not done, you know, one's currently in progress. I've got an itch on my ear and it's driving me crazy. Um, so anyway, that's what's been, been on the machine for right now. Um, I made a few table runners that I had quilted and like I said, I didn't take any pictures of it. I know, I should have, but I was just sort of just being in the zone and, and just making them. So we got together um, last weekend and I gave the, the gifts to my friends. So um, you may see them, you may not, I don't know. Uh, so one of the things that I have been working on is I've been kind of playing a little bit when I can with my knitting machine. As you know, if you have watched, um, I purchased a Brother Home Knitter th KX350, I think is what it is. And it's a, it's a knitting machine. It's a hobby style knitting machine. And so I'm trying out some different things. And so this is my latest creation. And um, the thing with a knitting machine is it, it knits in stock and net. So you don't, you can't do um, 
garter where you're knitting back and forth it's going to be knit and purl and knit and purl and so one of the things that's challenging for anything that you make is your edges like if you were to try and make say a cowl and you don't want the edge to roll in um, you can't without manipulating the stitches every time you go over to, ch to try and change the stitches around just knitting it it will do it in stockinette which makes everything roll so I'm trying to play around with some different way, ways that I can make that work a little bit better and not curl in. So this was one that I just did just the other day. And I got on YouTube and just searched knitting machine stitches, I think is what I searched. And so this one came up, which I think is really pretty. And it they called it a mock brioche or half brioche is what the video called, what she named it. And this is the back side of it. You can see where I Kitchener it is, and that's the story. <laughs> so, so you can see, I just think it gave it a really neat texture, both front on the front side and the back side, um, because you know when I'm when I if I'm going to make something like a cowl, I don't I want because it's going to flip over. I want the back side to look nice and be interesting. So the yarn I used for this was some yarn I got for my birthday from my friend Lori and it's Mountain Colors yarn and the color is Sealy. Um, it is a 53% superwash merino, 17% wool, or 17% wool, 17% silk and 13% nylon. It's got a lovely drape. My goal when I started it was to make more like an infinity, you know, like a longer loop. And so what I did is um, you cast on with some waist yarn. So that basically gives you like a provisional cast on. You've got live stitches with your main color. I was going to knit this really long, join it um, in a Kitchener stitch and, um, you know, and then have like an infinity cowl. And I was just going along just super smoothly. So one of the adjustments and one of the ways you can make different stitches on the machine is there's little levers on the cam and you can move a lever and it's gonna, it's gonna, um, if you pull some stitches, some needles forward, when you move the cam over the, over the top of the needles, if you have your switches in the right spot, it won't knit those. So it makes like a slipped stitch. So the idea with this stitch is you would go over three times skipping those particular needles and then you flip the switch which knits everything. So what that does is then pulls those skip stitches it, together in a stitch. It was going along great, had a great routine. Um, that's the video you saw in the beginning was me working on this. And um, so there's a tool that helps you slide like there's different ones but the one I use slide every other needle forward so every other needle I moved forward did my stitches and then it would move the next the opposite needles forward so in order for me to remember which where I was on it I just had a piece of paper with one and two so I'm moving you know the what I called my one stitches forward, do, 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 do my thing, flip the paper so I know the next one is two, and that just kept me on track because if I paused for anything, it was like, what number what did I do? Which one did, I? and it was slowing me down. So anyway, that's what you're seeing in the video. So I, I was going along just super great, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> I forgot to slip flip the switch to, to make it so it wouldn't um, knit those ones that are forward, it wouldn't do the slip stitches. Boom, 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 one, two, three. Well, it knit all of the stitches for three passes. And I didn't know how to undo that because I was gonna try and take it back three rows, but then you're taking it back to where there's slip stitches. And it, it was like, I, I can't figure this out. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm done. <laughs> So thankfully, it was as long as it was because this is a really nice size to wear like this. Um, but I, my intention was to <laughs> make a longer scarf or a longer cowl. So you can probably see right here, I Kitchenered it, which there is a line. And I think that's just because of the color, you know, the, the two colors mat going together. I'm, I'm fine with that because it's gonna be in the back and, and then it's kind of scrunched up. So I, what I did when I was doing the stitches is I didn't do any slip stitches for three stitches on either side of this pattern. 
Well, that still created that roll that you get. So what I did when it was done, I, I just steam pressed it with my iron and then I um, picked it up, took it off the machine, kitchenered it together so now I have a loop. And then I took the yarn and with my crochet hook went around the edge with a single crochet and then went around with something I found on YouTube. I don't know what. And it just made ever so slightly this little doot, 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 little edge and I washed it and blocked it and it it's fine it's perfect for what I will wear I will wear this a lot because for one it's beautiful and um, it's a good size um, I do have to say this yarn bled like someone killed it it's beautiful yarn it's beautiful color but this sucker bled like crazy. Um, I let it soak with some eucalyan and it, the water was just red. And so drained that, rinsed it all out, just tried to squeeze out and rinse and rinse and rinse and it just kept getting color, color, color. So then I ended up soaking it with some vinegar, which uh, I only got a little bit of color after that, then rinsed that out because I didn't want this smelling like vinegar and i don't feel like i stopped the bleeding i think this will still continue to bleed each time i wash it so if you do get that yarn or you have that yarn it's beautiful but be aware that it's a bleeder and that was a little disappointing i was glad i didn't have it in a sweater or something that was with another color that it would have bled onto because that would have been a mess but for this it's fine so now i have like a half a ball of yarn because this was supposed to be longer <laughs> so I don't know what that's gonna mean um, maybe I'll make another one I was initially trying to make some other kind of design and I just couldn't get it to start right and I tried several times and I thought okay I just need to knit something I like the fact that the both sides of this look look really cool so I don't know I might make more of these we'll see one of my first attempts that I tried and I just picked up some yarn out of my out of my stash this was some yarn that I had in my shop for a long time it never sold so I thought I'll use it because as you know I don't make things out of beige <laughs> beige is not not good but I thought hey, I'll use it it's an MCN so I tried what's called a tuck stitch and I really really like the uh, texture that it has um, and what I did on the sides is I did what would basically be some yarn over. So it made like an eyelet on the edge and that helps keep it from rolling. So that's, um, that worked out pretty well. That was like a, every third, every third row, I would slip a couple stitches on both sides and, and do a yarn over. I kitchenered it. This one isn't as obvious because of the coloring. Um, the backside does look like the back side it's a little bit interesting because you do have those little tuck stitches um, and so that was the first one I tried and and I like it um, I don't know if I'll ever wear it I might wear it just like when I'm walking the dog or something like that and then I was trying um, just grabbed a couple more skeins of yarn and you might recognize this because it was a pair of socks at one point and just trying with doing like striping and kind of color work and so yeah so that's what I was trying with that um, it's still connected to the yarn because I'm gonna rip it out but this is the waist yarn so this this is how you would cast it on um, if you want to have live stitches because the idea with when I was kind of playing with this is I was also trying to get gauge and like how many stitches make it really how wide it's going to be because when it's on the knitting machine it's stretched really far um, here's the back side so you can see this is more like color work but it does make it real stretchy just because the, the machine already kind of has it pretty stretched out so I don't know what I thought I would what I was thinking with this and it ended up making it a little wider than I would have wanted for this would be to make turn it into a tube knit it this long and knit it you know long enough to do a long cowl and mattress stitch up the side I could join it because I've got provisional cast on I could join it together once it got long enough like I did this but it would be done in a tube um, so I was just trying to play with like how could I do stripes and 
what that would look like. So this may actually continue to be something because I think these two colors go really well together. Um, but yeah, it was kind of fun to just play with like if you skip these stitches and if, you know, every third stitch, every fourth stitch, whatever it is. So the machine came with the little, they call them needle pushers because that's what they do is they just push the needles forward. And so it'll push like every other one, every third one I think and every fifth one I think is what I have and so then I had Jim make me some other ones that do four stitches at a time and five stitches at a time and so I can kind of play with some different things so that was that was kind of fun it was really kind of fun to play with it and to just see what I can do and what just to also just see how big things end up you know what gauge it is so these are all fingering weight yarns so that's uh, that's nice because for this kind of thing I like it to be a thinner yarn so um, yeah so to be continued I'm still learning it still trying to you know just see how things work and trying new things and um, I've found a couple of YouTube videos of people that have quite a few um, tutorials on how to do different stitches there's a lot of different kinds of machines and there's ones that are automatic ones with punch cards which automatically do like move the needles in the right positions and stuff this is very basic um, so I have to sometimes look at a video and see how they're doing it on their more fancy machine and put it to put it to use on on my basic machine so I'm having fun playing with that there's a lot more that I want to explore with that um, you know even though this didn't turn out the way I had intended it to, I knit this, knit it and Kitchenered it probably in two to three hours. So, you know, this would take me a week to knit by hand. So, you know, to be able to get something done quickly so that you have something pretty to wear is a plus. And then I'll save my knitting time, my hand knitting time for making bigger garments and stuff which I'll talk about in a little bit so I did get some things done uh, knitting wise as well like I said before I did a lot of sewing which I don't have pictures of um, so let me show you some things I finished one of the things I finished was something that I've shown in the past I still have to weave in the ends on it um, but it's my niece's sock head hat this was my yarn um, wake me up before you go go and um you know there's not much to say i did made some modifications three inches of ribbing instead of four um i decreased the number of stitches so that it wasn't so big so hopefully it fits her hopefully it'll work hopefully she'll wear it i don't know um but it, i like the color and i think that'll be really cute for her um, so weaving in at the ends of that. The other thing I worked on was my son-in-law's hat, which was the frolicking deer. No, I thought I was making the frolicking deer, um, but they're moose. And so, you know, moose have this little waddly thing. Because <laughs> at first I was like, what is wrong with my moose? It's got a little bit of a skinny neck, but I think you get the gist of it. Something I did modify is I did redesign the tree because the tree in the pattern is real fat and just like this big fat boughs of branches and I didn't want that I didn't want so much of the lighter color to be so prominent so what I did is I just took some graph paper so this is my sketch I I sketched out the deer the way the pattern is it's a free pattern on Ravelry I'll put the link to that and everything else down below and then figured out how many stitches I needed to take up to do the tree. Um, somebody on their project page did show a tree that looked similar to this. And so um, I just looked at their picture and just and kind of copied it, made some adjustments to it, but kind of copied it in the fact that to me that looks more like a real tree than the tree that curves up which they like to do for Christmas trees. <laughs> trees don't grow like that, they grow like that. So I am much more happy with, with the tree than I would. So this is, this is for my son-in-law for Christmas. Um, I made it with 
I made it with some yarn. <laughs> this is like an acrylic wool blend. Something I got at Joanne Fabrics, and I can't remember what it is now. And then this is some wool of mine. I um, It's all worsted weight yarn, and I had ordered some worsted weight yarn for my shop, and I usually uh, dye superwash wool, and this was non-superwash. And I was like, oh crap, that's not what I wanted to pick up. Well, let me just see how it dyes. And it's definitely a different process, but um, I just wanted a really light, light, light gray. So that's what I got. It's just barely, barely gray. So I'm going to, it's real soft, whatever this, oh, it's, it's um, Deborah Norville, Everyday Worsted or something like that. It's really soft. Um, I don't know if I'll wear it, <laughs> but uh I'm glad it's done. I had this, this was like the third try on it because I was afraid it was going to be too big and he's not a real big guy. And so I knew, I had in my head that if I cast on the number of stitches, which was like 104 stitches or something like that, that's really big. So I decreased the amount of stitches and knit it. And then I got, I don't know, like this far. And I was like, this is feeling really tight. And so I kept having Jim try it on and he's like, yeah, it's getting too tight because of the color work. I mean, it definitely makes it thicker. And so I ripped it out, bumped up the stitches. Like I think it was in increments of eight, bumped up the stitches by eight stitches and started all over again, got it going. And I'm like, nope, it still feels too tight. So I ended up doing it the number of stitches the pattern calls for. I mean, sometimes you just have to trust the pattern. <laughs> um, so I did that. The hat in the pattern calls for another band with um, the words F the cold. That makes the hat really tall and I knew I didn't want that. So I had to figure out like where I was going to decrease it. Um, and I started to decrease it. I think I actually got to the top. I think I finished it. Didn't cut my yarn yet. Had Jim try it on. It was too short. Ripped it back down to where the decreases were added like another inch or two I forget what and then decreased it and I think it'll be better so you know for just a funny hat I think it's it's fine so those are two Christmas presents that are done um, I'm gonna try and do a hat that just has the band that says F the cold for my son Robert and to see and maybe he'll maybe he'll wear it I don't know I do have a, a hoe a half finished object um, with that same beige yarn I decided to knit a pair of fingerless mitts for a good friend of mine for Christmas. So the pattern I picked, which I do happen to have here, is called something. Let me get, let me just look that up for you. Twin leaf mitts. See now this is what's neat, is I can do that and you can see it. Isn't that cool? Hopefully it's cool. <laughs> I'm going to assume it's cool. So I got one done. And so these are cashmere. Um, I don't know if she'll wear them, but you know, what are you going to say? All I can do is make them. Uh, so I, I'll make the other one and that Christmas present will be done. Um, modifications. I didn't, didn't do any modifications. Nope. Pretty much just did it the way the pattern called for. So I will knit the second pair. I contemplated giving her the cowl with the mitts. I might. I don't think she'd wear this, but I might give it to her just because they match. And what am I going to do with it? I'd wear it, though. I think I'd wear it when I go and walk the dog, especially if we get a hard winter like last year. Um, another thing that I did work on was um, my sloth mess socks. So uh, if you remember correctly from the last time we spoke, I was going to do an afterthought heel. And I had my little book and I was going to do the afterthought heel with a gusset and all this stuff. And I put in waist yarn and I knitted and I was getting pretty close to putting in the toe. And I thought I better stop here and um, really read the pattern and see if there's something that I'm supposed to do. And I got all confused. I couldn't figure it out. I don't understand the way this book is written. And I'm sure it's just me. But I ended up ripping it all back down to, <laughs> down to the heel, putting it back on my needles, and just did my heel flap and gusset. So that delayed the completion of my socks. So I've <laughs> that's as far as I've gotten. I was like, you know, out to here when I had it before. But 
green heel in. I'm going to put a red toe on it. Um, I would really like to have these done by Christmas, but we'll see. So this is my yarn, Slothmas um, Vanilla Sock. These are on 2.5s, I think, which I think I may go back down to 2.25. I don't know. I keep playing with it. Um, so one half sock done. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get done by Christmas, but they might. They might. Um, another thing I started, which has been a pretty big project, I talked to you guys about wanting to start the a, a DK weight sweater and I thought I was going to make the comfort cardi by Andrea Mowry and um I it's I've seen it in on in, um on Ravelry and they look really great and I really really was set on doing that and then the, I just was like hesitant and I couldn't figure out what it was and I just I don't feel like that's gonna that I don't know how much I would wear it I don't know there was just something that was just not uh, exciting me about it I thought I just need just a real plain cardigan because the yarn I'm using is pretty colorful and pretty bright and I you know I just felt like because of the yarn I was using um, I just needed to have a simpler cardigan so what I decided to do is the Staring at Stars by Alicia Plummer. She's the one that makes um, the campsite cardigan, or camp, it's campsite, pullover cardigan, shawl, all that kind of stuff. So I got it started. I just was just like, I just want to start the sweater. I just want to, I kept thinking, no, make the hat. You got to make the this. And I thought, I'm going to start my damn sweater. <laughs> because I want to and I'm glad I did it was it was what I needed to do so I've got I'm alternating skeins so I have two balls of yarn attached to this so give me just a second to get myself squared away okay so here it is I've got it separated for the sleeves and I'm going down the body um, I picked a smaller size one thing that's nice about a cardigan is I can try it on a lot easier than the pullover. Let me pull that yarn down. Can you see a theme with the colors I got going on here? So, I'll put a button band on it. Or like a ribbing. It doesn't have buttons, but yeah. I love working with this yarn. I have to say... This was yarn, a colorway that when I came up with it, it was like, I just love it. It is so cool to work with because the color changes really frequently. And I love all the colors that are in it. And it's just really neat to see how the colors change. And one of the modifications I, I am doing, oh, don't come off my needles. That would upset. <laughs> okay. Oh, don't come off. Whew, that was close. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, one of the modifications I am doing is down the side, it calls for these eyelets. And it calls for you to do the eyelets every row. And I'm doing them like every fourth row. Because I just feel like it's too it, it's, it's too much. But um, but I'll do it like every fourth row. So I'm I've, that's, I, that's the only modification I've done. Um, towards the bottom, when you get towards the bottom, I don't know, six or seven inches, it has you making the eyelets very similar to, um, the way she's done the campsite stuff, the, the shawl. I do have my campsite shawl that I wear when I just throw it over my shoulders when I'm watching TV. Um, so it's similar to that. I don't know that I'm going to do that at the bottom of this. I think I'm just going to do it, just keep going with my stockinette and not have the eyelets at the bottom. It's just, I don't know, not feeling the eyelet thing. So, um, yeah, so that's been actually a really nice project to start. I did, And that was, like, that's going, knock on wood, that's going pretty well because I didn't, I only had to cast it on the one time. I didn't screw it up. And it's going really easy. I am understanding the, I'm understanding what's happening. And I think because when I made my first sweater, 
you know, it's like it's very similar because it's starting top down and blah, blah, blah. Where when I started my um, find your fade sweater, which was my first sweater, I didn't really know. I didn't understand what was happening. Now I understand, oh, these are going to be the sleeves. That's what that's what these holes are. And, you know, it helps me get through it when I kind of have an idea of what it is that I'm doing. So it's going really easily. DK weight yarn is a joy to knit with because it knits up way faster. And my DK is really nice and soft and plump. And so I'm really enjoying all of it with that sweater. So, um, yeah, so that's something that I'm going to continue to go on with. Um, a couple of the new things that I have. This is so weird to just keep recording and not having to stop. Oh, fingers crossed this works. Um, I participated in the scavenger hunt that happened on Instagram with David of the Dog Dare podcast, Lorelai. Um, what is her podcast called? Something with Lorelai. I don't know. I'll put her information down below. Um, Nancy of Round Rabbit, Stephanie and Rebecca of the Mean Girls, and they were posting when they went to Rhinebeck, they would post little pictures of which were clues, and you were to collect all the clues, and then when they were done, you sent in all the ones that you collected. I won a prize, which didn't do it to win a prize. It was just fun to play along, but I did win a prize, and I won a prize from Lorelei. So they each sent out a prize. And she sent me one of her bags. So this is Lorelei's info. She makes beautiful jewelry, which I would love to purchase, but I just don't wear jewelry. Like, I do good if I can remember to throw a pair of earrings in for you guys. Otherwise, I don't wear them. <laughs> I wear my wedding ring, and that's it. But this cute little wristlet bag, which I've been dying to use, but I'm waiting to show you guys. So it looks like weathered wood. There's a zippered pocket. I love it. I absolutely love it, and I plan to use this as my purse, I think. And a skein of Primrose Yarn. Look how well that goes together. This is um, Primrose Yarn Compe Company in Grumpy Jello, and it's an MCN base. So it's her Sophia base, I believe. Uh, 414 yards. So I don't know. This is this is great. This will be so great for me. Um, Maybe I'll knit a cowl on my knitting machine with it. I don't know. It's got to be something special. So that was really sweet. Thank you, Lorelai. I don't know that she watches the podcast, but um, it was really thoughtful and really nice. Like I said, I had no expectations of winning anything. I just liked to play along. Um, something else that I got, which I'm really excited about, is I met we, we I met with Michelle and Leslie and Lori, and we um, you know got together and knitted and stuff. And Michelle gave me a Christmas present. She made an advent calendar. There's something jiggly in there towards the bottom. I think it's in this one. So I've never had one of these before and I've seen them and I've wanted one and they're really expensive because it's a lot of labor that goes into making these. And Michelle did it. And I can't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow I get to open this one. She um, I, she got this these, this box, this set up somewhere, and so she's got it labeled with these little tags that so says what the yarn is on the back side, and she's wound up little mini skeins and stuffed this full. And then on Christmas Day, I also have a skein of yarn, a whole skein of yarn of something that I get to open and, um, yeah, and get to play with. So I, um, this will, pro this will go in my, my, uh, fingering weight blanket that I'm crocheting and I hadn't picked it up in a long time cause I've just been busy knitting and making other things. And my hands were getting really tired of knitting. I think I was knitting on the sweater or maybe it was the hat. The hat kind of tired my hands out, the, um, uh, moose hat. And I thought, I'm going to pick up my blanket and oh, I've just felt really good. I haven't picked it up in a long time and I'm working off of a magic knot ball that I made when I ripped out my first blanket, magic knotted it together and I'm re not knitting it, crocheting it. <laughs> so I, so anyway, I'm using up that yarn. So I'm still got, I don't know about that size of a ball, which is quite a bit of yarn left. And so I was hoping that, oh gosh, maybe I can actually get through this. And so on December 1st, 
I can start with this advent calendar and I don't think I'm gonna make it but I'm going to as I open these and use them I'm going to magic knot them and they'll go in my blanket and it was just really thoughtful and a lot of work went into it and I appreciate that like tremendously uh, so that is what I have for you today I have no new yarn I have not been dying I have not felt like dying I have not been uh, feeling inspired that way I have been creating things like I said I've been making some Christmas gifts working on some knitting um, but some days have been kind of a struggle uh, going into the holidays it can get a little tough so I haven't been doing any dyeing I am hoping I was planning on not really adding anything new to the shop because right now I think things get a little bit slow everybody's already got their yarn that they're gonna do for Christmas want to kind of get some of the stock down a little bit my goal is to um, try and come up with some new colorways and do a bunch of dyeing so that after the first of the year I can put a bunch of new stuff in there that's my goal I haven't taken out the dye pots in a couple of weeks um, I just am not inspired by anything and so I have to I in order for me to feel I have to be in the right frame of mind to be creative like that I can sew a pattern I can can knit a pattern um, I'm following somebody else's directions I'm not coming up with that but the coming up with an idea has to come organically to me and if I'm not in the right frame of mind um, it just doesn't happen so um, I just I, I don't know I'm hoping that it'll come back I'm pretty sure it will I think I just need to get through um, just need to get through what I'm going through and um, so Hopefully after the new year, I'll have some new stuff in, for the shop. But right now the shop's open. I've still got stuff in there. Um, thank you to everybody that participated in the small Saturday, no, small business Saturday sale that I had. That was really successful. Appreciate you stopping by and purchasing some of my yarn. So uh, until next time, see the thing that's hard about right now is that it's Christmas time. And so a lot of the stuff that I am wanting to still make it's Christmas presents and I can't really show that so I have a couple other things that I'm gonna be working on um, to get finished for Christmas and I may have to wait I don't know maybe it'll come next time I don't know so anyway I will see you in a couple of weeks when I record again and I thank you again for stopping by and um, until then keep knitting um, keep making stuff and you know, reach out to your loved ones because you never know when they can go away. So, love to you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm.